What makes a number one brand? What makes the leader in a category the leader? Did they all do something kind of the same way with their commonalities that enabled them to become the number one player in their category? And we found that there were actually, and several of them have to do with what do leaders do, right? Leaders teach, yeah. leaders educate, leaders grow the market through education and through teaching. Now, in the CBD space, that's a little bit difficult if you're also selling a product because there's a lot of conflict between what you can say according to FDA and FTC in your educational material, like a blog, um, relative to selling products like CBD or supplements or cosmetics. But leaders teach. So finding a way to teach is really one of the critical factors that enables a brand to become a leader in their category. Gotcha. The second thing that every leader in every category did was they changed the rules of the category. They evolved the way the consumer market looked at the category. What did they think this category was all about? Oh, no, it's different than that. That's amazing. That's interrupt you, Marty, but I got trained by Zig Ziglar and Sandler Sales Institute and all these really big sales people. And the number one thing that makes people buy is new information. Absolutely. And that's the purpose of what I'm going to teach today um, is a very unique slant on this new information concept. Gotcha. And it's, it's so powerful that it really changes the game completely. When you grasp the concept of what I'm going to talk about today, positioning and depositioning, if you really grasp that, you're going to take a look at your website, your products, your brand message, and all of the things that you're saying, how you're marketing. You're going to look at it completely differently after today. Oh, um, yeah. Get ready, people. This is going to be deep. Marty's going to share some slides and do a presentation. So get your uh, notes ready because <laughs> this is going to be – Marty doesn't play around. This is going to be some deep information with actionable tips. So get ready for sure. Uh, yeah, we're going to burn the house down. So <laughs> by the way, Matt, um, when this is over, I will be very happy to share the entire uh, presentation with everybody in the group. So, Oh, great. Okay. So we can uh, either upload that or we'll email that to people or either one will figure that out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Not an issue. So the third thing that we found out from this three-year study was that consumers make their buying decisions in a very, very specific way. And if you can tap into understanding the consumer decision-making process, you can craft your messages in a very particular way to, as you said, Matt, provide new information. In my world of positioning, we, we call it influencing the way consumers believe and behave relative to your brand, but more importantly, how they believe and behave relative to your competitors. Gotcha. So, um, I've been very blessed to have worked with some of the, you know, amazing mentors in marketing and advertising over my career. Um, and I've evolved this concept of positioning over 35 years uh, where I've actually created and invented and developed very specific tools for people to use to be able to create and deploy the right kind of positioning for them. So these are basically like fundamental things that won't change. They won't change if you do them right. If you do them wrong, you're going to have to keep playing at it. You know, the old <laughs> Gotcha. Spray and pray mentality, right? You know, throw spaghetti on the wall, see what sticks. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> That's not the way we do marketing. The whole point no. of positioning, the whole point of positioning 
is to eliminate the guesswork. You want to take all the guesswork out. Now, does that mean you shouldn't be testing, A-B testing? Of course not. You want to always be testing yeah. because you can always do better and you can always explore better headlines, better messages, better style, etc. You know, mentioned Paul before. Um, Paul's one of the smartest guys in, in branding development for large part because he really has the concept of positioning well integrated. So when he creates a brand, he's already built in the strategy part yeah. of how that brand is going to convey a positioning to its intended audience. And that's what we're going to get into today. Um, but if you guys haven't um, worked with Matt and Paul um, and Aaron Nosbish, another expert who's successfully deployed positioning strategy um, in his work, growing his brands very successfully. But if you guys haven't worked with Paul and Matt and Aaron, um, you're leaving a lot of money on the table and you're probably making a lot of of mistakes that you don't need to be making. So that's funny. That's what all of our clients say that when they hire us, that they actually save money by hiring us because we help them avoid certain mistakes and just focus on things that are going to make the money. So, yeah. Absolutely. So that's all about. Um, but yeah, so you ready to jump into the presentation? Yeah, if you insist. <laughs> I'm excited, man. I'm taking notes over here too. Okay. Um, I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> Okay, so now uh, let's see. How do we get my? Can you see my presentation? Yeah. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about brand positioning. And something that you're going to learn during this presentation is a lot of material, guys. So I'm going to go really through this at a pretty brisk clip, and you know, I'll be available to answer questions. Uh, after the presentation. You don't need to make notes. Everybody's going to get a copy of this. Nice. But one of the key things that we talk about is why. The why people do things, right? So I'm going to teach a little bit about the introduction of brand positioning, but there's a purpose, and the purpose is competitive advantage. We're going to get into that. So what is this really all about? We're all in business for one of, or maybe more than one, specific purpose, right? We sell a product or we sell services, or maybe we're an agency or a consultant. We want to help people, particularly in this category. These products can be very beneficial, and we want to do a good thing for people out there. But at the end of the day, we're all looking to make a profit, right? But as a business. We face a lot of challenges, and these challenges are pretty similar for every single business, and this applies to every single category, right? We have to worry about inventory and production and packaging and marketing and operating our business and staffing our business and managing the finances. I mean, there's a lot to worry about. But one of the most critical aspects for any business is acquiring a constant stream of new customers, new clients, new consumers. This is the top of the funnel into the acquisition mode, right? If we don't continually bring in a new stream of new buyers, we're not really going to scale our business very successfully. And having acquired these new customers, we want to increase the profitability of every one of them as much as possible, and we want to increase the longevity of their lifetime engaging with us. Now, here's where it starts to get a little interesting. If we are not absolutely the only one who sells whatever it is that we're selling, we have what I call these pesky things, you know, called competitors, and they're fighting to win the same target client and consumer that we want. They're vying for the same 
consumer that we want to come to us. So this becomes a game of competitive advantage. We want the customer. And we do not want to allow the customer to choose our competitor. And yes, that is within our control. So to do this, we need a strategy. And then we need the tactics that will enable us to compel our target clients and customers in favor of our brand. And at the same time, away from our competitors. Because our business's profitability and our success relies on our ability to outsmart and outflank our competitors, we need a proven process that takes the guesswork out of how do we eliminate the threat that competitors pose to us by potentially taking those customers that we want. And of course, the objective is that we want to outsmart our competitors. We don't need to be in the position of having to outspend them. That's a losing proposition. And this is what positioning and depositioning is really all about. How do we outsmart our competitors? And we do this in a very particular way. And it's all based around understanding that competitive advantage is the whole ballgame. If we can achieve competitive advantage, we get the customer. And our competitor doesn't. And if we understand what goes into achieving competitive advantage strategically, we can then create the tactics and the assets and the messages and the materials to deploy those tactics to the marketplace. And we start to see customer acquisition and marketing pretty differently than we've ever seen it before. So when we use positioning, we approach every single aspect of our business, our marketing, our communication, the content we write, our ads, our SEO, our social media posts, the content on our websites, the look and feel of our websites, even our brand names and our labeling, we look at it with a different set of eyes because now we know how to do certain things to achieve competitive advantage. But positioning and depositioning is a marketing science that works backwards. We always work from the outside in. And there's a very specific approach and a pathway and a process that enables our brands, our businesses, our products to virtually eliminate our competitors. And if you do this right, it works almost all the time. So let's define brand positioning. Brand positioning, simply put, is the science of controlling consumer perceptions in favor of our brand. That's the positioning part. And away from our competitors and our competition. And competitors and competition are different, but that's for another, another session. When we talk about acquiring a new customer, what we really mean is that our target, that customer, has made a buying decision to engage with our brand, our product, our company, or our service. Now, that could be an actual purchase, or it could be an email opt-in, or it could be a form fill, or it could be a visit to our store, or it could be a request for more information. Any action that gets our target to cross the line from thinking about it to doing something about it, that is the process of acquisition. But 
we want our target consumers to make these buying decisions in our favor. So we have to understand how these consumers make their buying decisions in the first place. And there's a very specific way that consumers make buying decisions. If we can control that process, we win. If we don't control the process, we will lose. We'll spend more money, we'll spend more time, and our competitors will just clean our clocks. After decades of intensive consumer buying research, we know, and this is not guesswork, this is not my opinion, we know that consumers make buying decisions not based on how great your product is. They don't care. They make buying decisions based on, and this is the home run, based on their belief that your product is going to solve a problem, resolve a pain point, or fulfill a need or desire that the target believes they have. So we have to control how these consumer targets form their beliefs because people behave based on beliefs. If you believe something, you will behave that way. If you believe something is not good, you aren't going to buy it. If you believe something is going to benefit you, solve a problem, fulfill a desire or a need, you'll gravitate towards it. But beliefs don't just happen overnight. They don't fall out of the sky. Beliefs are formed over a period of time from a series of experiences, messages, and influences. We call these micro-perceptions. All the experiences that you have, I tried this brand, I tried that brand. Ah, every time you have a new experience, you add to your portfolio of knowledge, which helps you form a belief, either a favorable belief or an unfavorable belief. Every time you are influenced, maybe you've read a brilliant article by someone or you've been educated by someone. Remember I said leaders teach? We call this the professor syndrome. Imagine you're in, in college and it's your first day of the semester and you're going to the auditorium for one of your classes. There's 50 or 100 students in the auditorium and some guy or, or woman walks to the front and scribbles their name on the, on the whiteboard and turns around and says, hi, I'm Professor Smith. The assumption is that person is an expert in the subject right? Because otherwise they wouldn't be at the front of the room. So that is a perception moment, right? And that's going to influence you in terms of whether you believe what they say, accept what they say, learn what they say, how favorable you are to the information. And then you go through a class or two and guess what? the professor is, is brilliant and, and you love it and you're learning great stuff. Well, that's an influence moment. So all of these perceptions add up over a period of time to help you form a belief. And these beliefs are what control buying behaviors. So when we think about our target consumer, we need to think about all the experiences that they're having, all the messages that are getting into their head in front of their eyeballs, all the influences that are nudging them in one direction or another, how does that impact the way we need to craft our messages? Beliefs, once they're formed, are very, very hard to change. So positioning 
is targeted at a more vulnerable stage of the mind. It's when our targets are more susceptible to perceiving because perceptions are much easier to influence in our favor than already formed beliefs. So what's the objective? Why are we going to go through all of this? First of all, positioning establishes your brand as the leader in your category. It also has this incredible advantage of taking the current mindset about the category and making it obsolete. This is what Matt referred to earlier about providing new information. If you can evolve how people believe with regard to a particular category, you can actually gravitate them away from what I call the old way, which is all your competitors, to the new way, which is your brand or product evolved to present the message that it's going to solve your target's needs or pain points or desires. And if you do this the right way, it moves these customers away from whatever their current preferred brand might be or whatever their current competitor might be. And it also forces your competitors to kind of disrupt their marketing model to try to stay relevant. And if you can throw your competitors off their game, they wind up spending time, money, and resources to try to stay relevant, to try to keep their customer base so you're not taking it away. And that is going to take time, money, and resources away from them fighting you to get those customers that you want. When positioning is done right, it generates a tremendous incremental flow of business and revenue. And it sets up a very strong barrier to entry for your competition. It's also, in my opinion, done right, the single most powerful strategic tool in any marketer's toolbox, no matter what it is that you're marketing. So let's jump in. First of all, you need to know that every brand has a positioning, whether you know it or not, and whether you're controlling it or not. If you don't control your positioning, meaning how your target market perceives your brand and what it stands for and how it solves their problems, you're probably doing it wrong. And you're going to leave your brand open to a lot of vulnerabilities and risks because you're not controlling it. You have competitors and you have competition. And they're vying for the same customers and consumers that you want. So if you let them control the message that goes out in the marketplace, then you're already playing catch up. Turn the game around. You control the message and let your competitors have to play catch up. Positioning strategy, when it's deployed properly, is actually what decides who's going to get the customer or the client, you or your competitor. And every leader, every number one brand in every category is the leader because of positioning. So let's take a minute or two and talk about what positioning is not. And then let's look at what it is. So first, positioning is not branding. I'm going to go into more detail on the distinction between that in a few minutes. Positioning is not a logo or a mark. It's not a tagline, and it's not a slogan. So if you're creating your new products, or you're creating a website, or you already have your website, and one of the first things you did was say, oh, I need a logo. I, I've got to come up with this great tagline. You've already missed it. 
And frankly, you may need to go back and you may need to make some modifications once you understand the power of what positioning can do, because you may be giving the wrong message. Or worse, you may not be giving the message that's going to influence the target's perceptions in favor of your product as opposed to your competitor. Positioning is not a pretty website. And this is one of my favorites. Positioning is not a USP, unique selling proposition. Unique selling propositions are all about you. It's why you're unique. Positioning is not about why you're unique. In fact, it's not about you. It's about your target. It's about why they have a particular need, why they have a particular desire, and how your product is going to help them overcome that need, fulfill that desire. At the end of the day, positioning is really not about you. I want to talk about intent for a moment while we're on the subject of USPs and the big idea, right? Okay, so let's pick something in the um, in the CBD space, a topic that's of uh, great interest, which is sleep, right? Now, forget the compliance issue that you can't use the word insomnia because insomnia is a disease and you're not allowed to treat or prevent or cure a disease. So you can't say helps with insomnia, but you can help maintain normal, healthy sleep patterns. That's perfectly compliant. But let's move away from compliance into marketing. Why do people want to buy a product to help them with sleep? They're not looking to sleep better or to sleep at all for the sake of sleeping. They're looking to get a good night's sleep because without it, they have a problem. They can't focus in the morning. They're tired when they go to work. They can't take care of their kids. They, their health suffers. There are reasons people want to get a good night's sleep. There are reasons people need to get a good night's sleep. So the core message from a positioning point of view is not helps with normal sleep patterns or help support normal sleep patterns, the real positioning message is helps you focus and be bright and bushy-eyed and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed the next day, every day. That's the message from a positioning point of view. What is the intent behind the surface intent? Why are people looking to relieve aches and pains? Well, maybe it hurts. No, sure, that's a great reason. But maybe it's because they can't walk their dog or maybe they can't climb stairs easily or um, maybe they can't play with their kids or maybe whatever it is that they're trying to do in a day-to-day -day fulfilled life, they can't do because they have these aches and pains, right? So claims about aches and pains is a superficial intent claim and statement and marketing message. You don't want to talk about that, not only for the compliance issue. What you want to do is you want to get into the consumer's mind from a positioning point of view. Enjoy more every day. Run further. Hike more. Whatever it is that their activity is being impeded because of their situation, that's the positioning approach. Let's take a look at what positioning is. Positioning is a strategy, and it's a foundational strategy, and its objective is very singular, competitive advantage. Bring the customer to you, prevent the customer from going to your competitor. It's also a tactical approach about creating a new category and by creating a new category, what I mean is evolving the way the market thinks about whatever it is they're thinking about today, take it to a new and different level. 
And positioning allows you to do that because it's a strategy that enables you to change the way your target consumers think and thus behave about a particular issue or an opportunity. In every client that I've ever handled for the last 35 years, positioning has always been the foundation that powers all marketing, all messages across all channels. It's what powers and guides you to craft your website content, your email content, your social media presentation and posts. Everything derives out of a sound positioning strategy because it's what gives you the competitive advantage. So while brand positioning is not about you and your brand, it's about your target and your competitors. What is it that your target is really looking to achieve? How are your competitors failing to present this message? And that's the vulnerability that you can slip into using positioning the right way. Let's do some definitional distinctions. A brand is not branding. A brand engages and deploys branding to help them build their brand. Branding is not your brand essence or your brand personality. A brand is an entity. It's a noun. A brand is a company or a product or a service name. Branding as a verb is an active deployment of how you convey your entity or your brand's Positioning. Slogans, taglines, logos, and styles, these are delivery mechanisms. They are not your brand. They are branding elements. They are branding deployments. They are branding tactics. Positioning is not the act of branding. It's the act of strategically crafting the message that will control the way your consumer perceives, believes, behaves, and makes buying decisions. Positioning is a foundation on which branding helps build brands. And this, again, shout out to Paul, is where the concept of strategic underpinning of building a branding portfolio is so powerful because your brand is not what you say it is. Your brand is what your customers believe it is. If they don't believe what you're saying, if they don't believe what you're showing, if they don't believe what you're presenting, you don't have your brand. Now let's take a look at the flow of how this happens. So if we understand that your brand is your company or your product or your service name or entity, it's how you are known. So brand equals entity. Branding is how your brand presents the elements of your identity, the elements of your meaningful benefit, the elements of how you solve problems for your target. Your branding includes a mixture of things, including your logo your marks, your taglines, your slogans, your color schemes, your styles, your tone of voice, your images. So your entity uses these presentation tactics to put forward 
and deploy the strategy that comes out of your positioning. Why should your targets perceive in favor of your brand or your products? And why should your targets perceive away from your competitors and your competition? But as I said earlier, all of this works backwards. So let's take a look at how it gets used. First, we start with the positioning. That's step one. You have to craft the positioning strategy, which we call a positioning platform, so that we can understand how our targets are perceiving in favor of us and away from our competitors. What is the meaningful benefit that our target is intended to perceive when they read our messages, when they visit our website, when they hear about our products? And how is that going to compel them to believe that it's going to solve a need or fulfill a desire that they have? Once we know that strategy, then we can create all the branding elements that deploy that strategy the right way. So if part of the strategy is that your target market is, um, and I'll pull an example again from one of Paul's great brand branding designs. Um, if your target is a patriotic consumer, then what's the message that you want to convey, right? And by presenting a very patriotic message, which could be that it's a veteran-owned company. It could be that because you're a veteran, you understand what veterans go through and what they're suffering from and what they're hampered from being able to do in their lives, right? And maybe it's the fact that you're aligned with veteran support organizations and so on and so forth. So this is part of the strategy of building this. Now, understanding what our target is and what their needs are, Paul went ahead and created an awesome brand. I'm going to give a shout out, Patriot Supreme, where all the branding takes this strategy and puts it forward into the marketplace brilliantly. So when a consumer just sees it, all the branding elements, when a consumer reads the messages, they understand, ah, oh, this is for me. This is going to help me fulfill my needs, my desires, overcome my pain points. Positioning plus branding creates the brand. Positioning is a strategy. Branding is part of how you deploy that strategy. When you create a strategy and deploy it successfully, you have the opportunity to craft, create, and build a powerful, sustainable brand. Look, you've all heard the expression that imperfect action is better than perfect inaction every time. You're only going to get results if you take an action, right? If you deploy a good strategy. Tactics have to flow out of a strategy. Otherwise, you're guessing. So, strategy helps define tactics. Tactics get deployed across all channels. And if they're deployed right, because they were defined properly, and the defining elements were based on a sound strategy of understanding who your target is, what their needs and pain points and desires are, they will achieve results. But positioning is what enables you to define your strategy. So a strategy well deployed leads to 
brand affinity, engagement with your brand, consumer loyalty, a belief that your brand is for me, which leads to higher engagement rates, which leads to more revenue, which leads to consumer advocacy, recommendations, social proof. One person loves it, they tell 10 others. 